Welcome back. If it has joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on channels television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Outbreak of strange infectious disease kills at least 100 persons with over a thousand others infected in Katsina State. Fate of state government workers hangs in the balance as Governor's Forum insists each state will determine new minimum wage payment plan in line with the internally generated revenue. Central Bank Governor insists nation's borders will remain shut until neighboring countries agree to implement mutual anti-smuggling policies. And British Prime Minister Boris Johnson again loses a vote in Parliament on whether or not to hold an early election in December. Stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com. Subscribe to Channel Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser or download the Channel TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. President Mahmoud Buhari has arrived in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, to attend the Economic Forum of Future Investments Initiative. On the sideline of the event, he will be holding bilateral talks with the Saudi King, Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and King Abdullah II of Jordan. On Wednesday, October 30, the President will participate in the summit titled, What is Next for Africa?, along with the Presidents of Kenya, Congo Brazzaville, and Burkina Faso. More than 4,000 delegates from over 90 countries are expected to participate in the conference and President Buhari will be speaking about the economic opportunities in Nigeria and his administration's drive to improve the business environment. Then on Saturday, November 2nd, 2019, President Buhari will travel to the United Kingdom on a private visit. The President's visit to the UK, confirmed in a statement from the Presidency, will follow his official trip to Saudi Arabia. He's expected to return to Nigeria on November 17th after the UK visit. And I'll toss it over now to Ibrahim Adra in Abuja for more on the news at 10. Hi, Ibrahim. Hi, Amarachi. Good to see you. Let's start from the judiciary. The Supreme Court has again struck out an appeal filed by the Hope Democratic Party, HDP, and its presidential candidate, Ambrose Uhuru, challenging the declaration of President Muhammad Buhari as winner of the February 23rd presidential election. The Apex Court struck out the appeal following the withdrawal of an application, praying for restoration of the appeal to be heard afresh. Mr. Uhuru and the HDP had sought for leave of the court to allow them bring back their appeal which had been struck out due to the filing of two notices of appeal in respect of one matter, which is against the provisions of the law. When the matter came up today, the court's panel, led by Justice Olukayo de Ariola, drew the attention of the counsel to the appellants to Section 285, Subsection 7 of the 1999 Constitution, and was asked whether the appeal had not been become statute bad. Although the counsel initially insisted the appeal could still be heard, he, however, made a U-turn and applied for the withdrawal of the application. In a short ruling, Justice Olukai Dariwula struck out the application. Now let's move to Edo State, where 14 members elect of the Edo State House of Assembly, who are yet to be sworn in, are asking President Muhammad Buhari to fulfill his promise of resolving the legislative impasse in the state. The lawmakers note that the time to act is now, as they allege that the state governor, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, has crossed the red line. The spokesman of the group, Mr. Washington Osifo, says there is an urgent need for President Buhari's intervention in order to avert a breakdown of law and order. The people of the world, the authorities of this country, and those who are sworn to, the, to defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria should see the need to speak to the conscience of the governor of Edo State in the person of Mr. Noyase Godwin Obaseki, to immediately release a proclamation letter, which will kickstart, of course, the inauguration of the Seventh Assembly. On that day, we were 19 members elect. We spoke through that conference unanimously to Mr. President. We spoke to the, the National Assembly, namely the, the reps and the Senate. We spoke to the organs of our party, the All Progressive Congress, 
through the National Working Committee. We spoke to all women in Nigerians, and we also spoke, of course, to our royal father, Obayewari II. Our appeal was very clear, that whereas Edo is one of the sub-national governments of the Project Nigeria, it was with dismay that we noted that after 10 days of the expiration of the sixth assembly, Edo was still without a proper, a, a constituent assembly. The Vice President, Professor Emo Shibaju, has been speaking on the benefit of recruiting police in local areas as a means of curbing crime. Professor Shibaju was speaking at the opening ceremony of a three-day retreat for senior police officers across the country in Lagos. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Ademoni's part, explains that the event will re-equip strategic managers of the force with modern-day approach to policing. Furthermore, our efforts in embracing community policing as a national security strategy is also informed by the need to close the trust gap between the police and the citizens and build partnerships and strengthen the collaboration with communities towards addressing prevalent security threats. We've made steady progress in this regard. An important part of that strategy is the recruitment of new personnel from within local governments and ensuring that after such training, such new officers remain within their local governments. Policing much, must be, as much as possible, local in order to give the local populace the benefit of the civil policing that we all need. The idea of this retreat is therefore in furtherance of a policing vision which emphasizes capacity building as a pathway to enhancing effective police service delivery in the country. We firmly believe that with the constant engagement of strategic managers and constant training and retraining of personnel of the force across all ranks, the expect expectation of the federal government and indeed the nation at large for a police force that is knowledge-driven, rule of law guided, community-oriented, technology-compliant and intelligence-led shall be achieved. Well, remain in Lagos where 32 students have made history as the pioneer graduates of the Augustine University in Ilaragbe in Lagos. At the meeting convocation ceremony, the vice chancellor of the school, Professor Steve Afolami, said seven of the 32 students back first class honors. He added that the university will be introducing new courses to the initial 13 it took off with four years ago. Senior members of the academia, graduating students of Augustine University Ilara in Lagos, their family members as well as friends, gather for the university's first convocation since its establishment four years ago. Our academic programs were 13 at the beginning. General approvals like institutional accreditation, which was done in July 2018, have secured Augustine University a permanent, a permanent license to run the university in perpetuity. The maiden convocation lecture is delivered by Professor Lugbenga Dideji on behalf of the former vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan, Professor Olufemi Bamiro, with special focus on the challenges of producing employable graduates in a depressed economy. Too much emphasis on theoretical education than exposure to entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial skills. Quality and focus of training offered by the university, not in tune with the needs of society. Having completed the Bachelor of Science program in economics. Augustine University, Lara, is churning out 32 graduates, with seven of them graduating with first class honors. It was really stressful, but later on interesting and educating because we had this very close teacher student experience. Because we were little, 
the teachers had our time. For a school with a humble beginning, the chairman of the board of trustees says the maiden convocation ceremony is gratifying. Now, the period of work, almost 10 years, to get to where we are today, I feel very fulfilled. Uh, coming in here and seeing the students graduate with all kinds of grades, first class, second class, and all that. And it also emboldens me to look more into the future. The establishment of Augustine University Ilara by Catholic Archdiocese of Lagos was approved by the National Universities Commission in 2015 to uphold the noble tradition of Catholic higher education of achieving intellectual, cultural and moral excellence. Let's take another break, but when the news at 10 returns, Iraqi military declares curfew in Baghdad following death of two people and over 100 injured in an anti-government protest. That and other international stories on Around the World in Five. Do join us again.